Hi guys, Darren here from Global Garage. Uh, today I thought we'd run through the replacement of a save game battery in a cartridge. Or a couple of cartridges. We'll see how we go. This is a Master System cartridge. I might do a SNES or a NES or an N64 cartridge after this, but we'll see how we go. We'll see how this one works out and take it from there. So, first things first, this is the battery we're going to put in. Um, it's a CR2032 with the tabs, um, so it's, it's a reasonably a direct replacement for the one that's in there. It's, it's pretty similar, um, I think it'll, it'll fit straight away. So let's get on with it. First thing we do is we grab a cartridge like Fantasy Star that has a save game battery in them. Not all Master Systems do, in fact most don't. Let's get on with it. Uh, two screws down here, just one on either side. Let's quickly take them out. Sometimes these screws are standard Phillips head, just like like that tip I've got there. And sometimes they're a, a game bit um, piece. Um, I think it's the 3.8 or the 4.5 uh, millimeter. I can't quite remember which one, but it's one of those. And so sometimes uh, these cartridges have game bit screws, and we just need to use a game bit tool to do that instead. But uh, today we got lucky, they're just standard Phillips heads, uh, so we've just pulled them out. Now the cartridge will just lift up, come apart, and here's the game board. Just move this out of the way. So the game board's got a standard little CR, well it's got a Sony CR2032 attached, um, soldered on, so we'll replace that. Now this one's Look, I know for a fact this one's actually in really good condition. It's still got plenty of charge, but for the exercise of this video, let's replace it. It's no harm, we're not going to damage anything, and we're going to end up with a, a better quality battery, a much more modern battery. So let's get our soldering iron. Um, mine's just a, one of these temperature controlled Duratex, nothing too fancy. So let's get on with it. Uh, these two big solder points here, that's our battery points. Uh, you can see that it connects there. So we're just going to take, we're just going to melt the solder, and with a bit of solder wick, we're just going to pull that solder off the board. So have to melt it, heat it up, and put the solder wick on, and just try and try and run the solder right down the wick. It'll naturally flow down the wick, and just kind of drag the solder, the the wick along. I mean, um, it's pretty hot on your fingers up here, so got to keep taking more grips. As you can see that one's pretty clean already. Um, we'll just do this one. Yeah, it melts pretty quick this stuff. The iron's nice and hot. So you don't want to let it sit for too long but at the same time you do want it hot to get it all out. So just wick all that out. That looks pretty good already. So let's put the iron down for a sec and have a look at what we've got. Just give it a bit of a wiggle. See where we're at. Okay, so we just need to straighten up these tabs. Uh, you can do that with your fingers or, a, or some pliers. Look, now that one's just come loose. So that one's pretty clean. Uh, this next one's a little bit stuck, so we might have to do a bit more soldering. Uh, let me just get some pliers. Okay, so I've got just a small set here. Let's just try and bend this back. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Let's have another quick crack at that with the solder. Solder wick. Yes, yeah, just try and pull some more out. Okay. And if you're really tricky, as you're melting it, you can also push it down through the hole. Uh, there we go. But I oh, find to do it. It's fine. I find it's better to do it slowly and just get the solar completely out of the way, and the battery just drops out. So on the flip side, it's really nice and clean. We haven't done any damage there. And this side's also clean. So. Notice that we've ended up with a small slot and a large slot, and that corresponds to the battery, so small and large. Um, and if you can see that positive there, I think you can see that. So this top tab's a positive, that one's a negative. So a big one's positive, it's easy to remember. So if we compare that to our new battery, it's gonna be almost identical. Positive on the top, top strap, 
negative will be the bottom. Now these pins are the same size, so um, they'll fit straight in. What I like to do in preparation is just straighten them a little bit and just kind of narrow them up a, a touch. Um, kind of like that. Okay, so let's fit this up. Um, so yes, yeah, so we put it on from this the clean side where it came off and it'll solder back through to that side. So uh, actually, you know what, handily, handily, is that a word? I don't know. There's markings on the board, positive and negative. So let's just line them up with the uh, new battery. Top pin positive, bottom one negative. So it'll sit like that. Uh, sits pretty flat actually. Uh, can you see that on the camera? There you go. You're probably not gonna get it dead flat, just the way these batteries are designed. Um, even like the original, there's always a bit of a gap, you know, the components stick up a little bit. So if you kind of look flush kind of down it, you know, we're pretty good. This side sticks up a little bit high. You could, you could really work on that if you wanted to, but there's plenty of clearance inside the case. So I'm not gonna go too fussy on this. The only thing you gotta be careful of is the polarity. Make sure you get your pins in the correct position, your positive and negative, and then you're right to solder. So just, um, I'll just bend the pins over a touch. I'll spin them the other way, actually. Spin it that way into the solder blob, and do the same with that side. Okay, put it flat on the bench. Kind of holds itself down. Grab your solder, and let's put it back together. Hang on, you drift out of camera there. Okay, let's heat it up. Add a bit of solder. Not too much, and that's all done. There we go. So, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, a little bit of flux mark around it, but it's pretty clean. Battery is in, nice and secure too, so. We're basically done. So the next thing to do would be to test that by plugging it into the console and saving a game. Uh, make sure it all saves. So we'll do that in a second. Um, I'll just put this back together. Uh, but before I do put it back together, I was just looking at the pins here. They're all pretty clean, actually. Uh, I'm just trying to get a good shot there for you. There you go. They're all pretty clean, but you know, while we're here, we may as well clean them off. Um, just, so we know, just so we know we've got a nice clean game and we're not gonna have any cartridge problems. So I'll quickly do that and then I'll come back and reinstall. Okay, so reinstallation is just a reverse of how we started. Um, front of the cartridge down, part side of the board down into it. It'll all sit nice and flat. Make sure your cartridge sits flat along the plastic, just in there. Just about right in there. Uh, if it was on an angle or something, it means your battery's not sitting quite right and needs to be addressed. And put the back cover on. Grab our Phillips head screws. Put them back in. There's no real need to over tighten them, it's just plastic. Let's do the second one. It's riveting video this. Get to see me putting in screws. All right, so that's all done. It's back to normal. You wouldn't even know it's been opened. Uh, and I'll go and give that a test. But um, it's just a matter of opening the game, making a few changes, saving the game, powering it off, powering it back up, opening your save game and seeing if everything's where you left off. Um, if that's the case, then the mod was successful and we're all done.